Neman Gzelyal, first deputy chairman of the Majlis of the Crimean Tatar people, stated that the Kursk operation, like all other actions of the Ukrainian armed forces, is aimed at restoring Ukraine's territorial integrity. This includes the liberation of occupied territories such as Crimea, occupied since 2014. He suggested that Ukrainian military and political leadership had decided to make an unexpected and non-standard move by invading Russia's territory. Zelyal, in an interview with Voice of America, said that this operation demonstrated the inability and unpreparedness of Russian leadership for such a development. He views it as a concrete step towards the deoccupation of Crimea and a rehearsal for its liberation. The Medlis deputy chairman earlier advised Crimean residents, especially Ukrainian citizens, to be morally and physically prepared to protect themselves during the deoccupation process. He emphasized that this warning was not meant to frighten people, but to ensure their safety during potential military actions to liberate Crimea. Zelyal noted that the Kursk operation allows Ukrainian forces to gain combat experience and test both military and political strategies. This includes preparation for negotiation processes and addressing various local issues, including work with the local population and organizing the management of liberated territories. Furthermore, he interpreted the operation as a serious signal to the Kremlin that all safeguards are simply ceasing to function and the world is simply losing patience and is ready to act much more seriously and sharply to force Russia to comply with international law. Politico's op-ed argues that Ukraine's recent cross-border raid into Russia's Kursk Oblast has shifted the tactical narrative of the ongoing Russo-Ukrainian war, but questions whether it will alter the strategic dynamics. The article suggests that while the incursion caught Russian President Vladimir Putin unprepared, its aims are likely limited to forcing troop redeployments and strengthening Ukraine's future negotiating position. The raid demonstrates Ukraine's offensive capabilities and proficiency in combined arms warfare tactics, but without increased Western support and the lifting of restrictions on long-range missiles, it may be challenging for Ukraine to tip the war decisively in its favor, Politico says. Russia still maintains a numerical advantage and the war of attrition continues to favor Russia. The article concludes that while the Kursk incursion has undoubtedly boosted Ukrainian morale and may encourage some tiring allies, it's unlikely to spark Putin's downfall or significantly change the war's course. Politico suggests that the operation's impact on future peace negotiations remains to be seen, as both sides continue to face challenges in mobilization, morale and international support. Russians who fled border areas in panic after the Ukrainian armed forces broke through say they were forced to abandon their homes and flee as local government control collapsed. Panic quickly spread through villages in the Kursk region of southern Russia as the Ukrainian armed forces staged the first foreign incursion into Russian territory since World War II. The British publication The Telegraph writes about this. We don't understand why they don't tell the truth. One woman told the Russian newspaper Kommersant. On TV, they kept saying, this is an emergency. What emergency situation is there when there are foreign tanks on our soil? This is already a war. Russians are outraged. On Sunday, Ukrainian forces released videos showing them tearing down Russian flags from government buildings in villages around the small town of Sudza, 75 miles southwest of Kursk. Other videos showed dozens of bodies of dead Russian soldiers scattered across fields or lying on the edges of forests. The head of the Belovsky district, which borders Sudza Nikolai Volobuyev, also admitted that Ukrainian soldiers had already advanced into his region and gave the order for evacuation. The situation is stable, but very tense. Today we do not understand all the problems in the border areas, he said. A Ukrainian security official told AFP that thousands of troops were involved in the attack, which saw about 600 square kilometers of Russian territory seized. In scenes similar to those seen across Ukraine after Russia's full-scale invasion in February 2022, tens of thousands of people were now fleeing the advance, pouring into Kursk in cars, on bicycles and squeezing into ambulances, clutching a few bags of hastily gathered belongings. Russian media reported that 20 evacuation centers had been set up for people fleeing the border region, but they quickly became overcrowded. 
Foreign soldiers armed with NATO equipment entered our land and within hours our city was reduced to rubble, their spokesman said, ignoring a woman sobbing nearby. We lost our land, our homes. We fled under fire, mostly without papers. Another man accused the Russian military of failing to protect the country. He said the evacuation had been chaotic, with people forced to flee in their underwear and t-shirts, and children wrapped in rags. In one cut-off village, people had to swim across the river as best they could, he said. Despite the Kremlin's orders to its propaganda arm to downplay the scale of the Ukrainian attack, the shock and bewilderment of the people has filtered through to the usually accommodating Russian media.